Namaskaram to each of you all who are working in the area of the arts and especially in dance. Um, it's an honor to be able to address you all. And uh, I have not prepared anything as such. Uh, I'd like to just speak, you know, from memory, from the heart. Uh, but the idea is a good one because uh, in some way uh, we have to look at some of the positives that came out of the COVID. And uh, I think uh, there are many. We learn to be quiet. We learn to introspect. We learn to live with our families, uh, perhaps for the first time. Uh, and we also learn to innovate. And one of the wonderful things, especially for my generation, who never jumped to the phone or never jumped to the laptop, we learned to reach out to our students and to our um, and to you all like this like this program. We never thought we could do that earlier. And uh, because of this uh, COVID, uh, this could have been done before COVID, you know. But we never we never thought it was possible to do something like this. We feel, yeah, it's possible, fine. Even somebody like me has the guts to say yes to, uh, to Lavanya's, uh, you know, inquiry. And I feel it's okay. Spending time, valuable time, an hour and a half or more with uh, all of you will enrich my life as well. Because then I know what's happening, how you feel. Uh, otherwise, one gets so isolated and, you know, we all remain in our own little castles. Uh, we are the king of our castles, but we are also poor because we don't meet others. So, so I chose to speak about the values that I hold here. And uh, I find that most of those values came from Kalakshetra. Uh, because when you're a small child, you very pick, very easily pick up the nuances of, even you imitate your teachers, You, if you love them a lot, then you begin to dress like them, you begin to speak like them. Tantariyame, uh, you uh, actually become uh, smaller amshas of their, their personality. And it's like children, it, all, all, many of y'all must be having children. So they are little, little nuggets of your personality, of your uh, persona, your uh, whatever values mother and father have or grandparents have that passes on to these children. And they, uh, they uh, that is why it is so important to be very, very careful in the early years to see that those, uh, that whatever you say and do is honest and, and true because children, absorb like sponges and uh, so it was with Kalakshetra. I came when I was very young and I came from very different background. My father was in the defense services. So I can say that some things were the same because uh, discipline was something that uh, was there in uh, the services as well. Uh, simplicity was there in the services as well because there was no I don't think service people have that much money to throw around. So you live in a simple way. And because you travel every two years, three years, you have a transfer to another city, another town, another part of India. So everybody learned to live literally in boxes. The boxes became the chairs in your drawing room and things like Not anymore, but I'm talking about when I was a child, which is now 50 years ago or 60 years ago. So now it's much more fancy and it's much more, uh, but uh, the, and it should be, it should be, it should have improved. But uh, what my point is, is that you are willing to live uh, in a simple way in order to live a life of some nobility. And so my first thing that I'd like to say about Kalakshetra is uh, that even the little I had as a young service officer's daughter, I had less than that when I came to Kalakshetra. 
I was, we slept, you know, we slept on the floor. We ate on the floor. We played on the floor. In the mud. Everything that we had was, uh, you know, it was, it was down to earth in that sense. And that simplicity is not just a physical simplicity. It leads to a mental simplicity where you learn to, um, if your lifestyle is simple, your mind becomes a little less cluttered. You're not carrying the weight of all these, uh, all the paraphernalia that is around. It was not like that. It was just, you know, very, uh, you could, you could uh, guess very easily what the next meal was going to look like. Friday, Aniki Bhajanen, Nichama Arko, Kartala, Anjumanik Da, Endrukono. So that, that, uh, that uh, simplicity led to a certain discipline. And uh, when your mind is less clustered, then you have to learn to absorb uh, values because there's a routine. So the second thing that I, and whatever I'm telling you now, uh, which, I, which is about a lifestyle change, I can tell you that it applies to your dance. That's why I'm speaking about it because Whatever I say, a simplicity of thought in your choice of items, simplicity of thought in the kind of Sanchari Bhavas that you will do. Uh, everything that I talk about in life applies to what you will do in your dance class as a teacher, what you will do as a dancer on stage, uh, and what you will do critically in your own life and the values that you pass on to your students and your children. So this simplicity uh, is not just a word I'm using casually. It's a very, very, very important uh, ingredient in your life, whether it is in the simplicity of your choice of uh, things, of your, of your food, of your clothes, everything. but more in your head. Uh, and it leads to, somehow it will lead to a routine. Gandhiji used to say that every man should be capable of keeping his area where he sleeps, area where he eats, uh, his clothes, his what he needs to live. He should be able to handle that himself. He said if every man does that, then there will be happiness. So he said all that a man needs is one mutti bhar of food. If you pick up arasi like this, this is all you actually need for one day. So if you see the simplicity of it, when you break it down to a simple thing like that, then you realize that actually that's all you need. And all the problems that we now face in ill health and this is because we eat more than that. Because we think more than that. Because we complicate our lives with excessiveness compared to simplicity. So a routine, what is the, what is the value of a routine? Uh, when I said Anjumani Kendra Pranan, you have to go to bed by, you know, 8.30. Th these are, you, 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 or, uh, in, in the amount of hours, working hours you have, there's an olive. There's a, there's a, a certain number in time and in value also. There's a certain constraint. Ultimately, you have to sleep at a certain time. You have to rest your body and mind. In that time, how will you distribute your work during that day? Sometimes you'll have excessive work. Sometimes you'll have less work. Can the, the days you have less work, can you put those extra hours into something constructive? Like, you know, you don't have any time for pranayama, but on that day you indulge yourself and do pranayama. You take a walk with the children in the park. You uh, go somewhere for a holiday with the family. What? So everybody has to measure their their lives out not only in the day but also in the months and in the year and when you have children you realize that these are holiday times these are times when there's school whatever so the routine in kalakshetra was very uh, uh, very definitive you couldn't get out of the routine 
And what does a routine do? It has the value of creating discipline in yourself. Because anybody who worked outside the routine, they were always catching up with the others who were following the routine. And following the routine means there must be time to for your classes, but there must be time to rest. There must be time to refresh your body and have baths and to wash your clothes and do your own work. So it was based on those very simple principles that even as a nine-year-old child, when I came, I washed my own clothes. I was There was an ayama, but she helped us to learn very quickly that you can do it on your own. Uh, she would wash our hair for us and nepote, she would but very soon she taught us that you know you you should try to do it on your own make your own hair so this led to discipline it leads to your self-discipline and uh, the other very very important thing that we as dancers uh, have to acknowledge is that discipline is at the crux of good dancing at the crux of good teaching is the backbone is a sense of discipline. Not only for you, you have to discipline yourself to be in class two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes before your students arrive, but they should try and beat you to it. They should come in early and start stretching. They should come in early and start, uh, you know, exercising their knees and exercising their wrists and elbows and things like that, just to prepare their body and mind for your class. Because then it makes it so easy for you when they are warmed up and they are ready to take the class. It gives you the signal that they want to do it. And it gives you the signal that their body is warmed up. Therefore, I can go straight into teaching that tilana that I'm teaching. Illena, you have to give at least 15, 20 minutes to warm their bodies up so that you don't have injuries. Most of the injuries come from an indisciplined class environment. I have to tell you this and I, I say it with sincerity because we have watched this whole game of learning and teaching for so long and every injury comes out of the teacher not watching carefully and not sensing the injury pattern emerging and every single student not listening to their body. When there is an you know, you have to learn to literally listen to yourself, not just to your feelings, also to your body. And most people will probably say to me, I can listen to my feelings because I know how I feel. And how can I listen to my body? I'm saying you should listen to your body first. If you feel uncomfortable in this area, you feel a little uncomfortable here, up away, you have a saltwater gargle, you definitely will be putting off the soreness, you'll be putting off the fever, you'll be putting off the thing which was due to come to you. So cleaning your paws at night, so like bathing, there are many things. After a performance, I know children who keep their makeup on and they go to sleep like that. And now, but it's so bad for your skin, it's so bad for the pores of your. Uh, skin, then you're looking for facials and you're looking for, you know, why you have pimples or why you have, uh, uh, you know, some injury in the eye or something, because you never took the kajal out at night. You have to take it out. It's an outside body that is inside the eye, inside the body. And these, these little, this little discipline, I see to it that my dancers clean their faces immediately after kacheri after we've met people and all that, cleaning not just your own face and body, but drying out your costumes, drying out your jewelry, seeing that they also have a chance to breathe again. Everything is wet, everything is damp. Then next day I'll look up, I'll see to it next day. It's uh, not the same as dealing with it at that time, wiping it with love and affection. That talisaman is the talisaman you will wear throughout your career. Looking after it is like an if a mridangist left the uh, marvel on the mridangam all night, he will have a hole in it in the morning. He cleans the skin 
when you are actually doing all the talks and all, you look at the Mridangist, he'll have cleaned it, he'll have taken water, he'd have cleaned the thing. But look at us. We walk in our gungurus with our chappals on. And to hold your own gungurus. Uh, some students say to me, Akka, naang unga bag I say, no. If it's my gungurus are there, then I will carry it myself. As long as I can carry it, I'll dance. The day I can't carry it, I'll stop dance. But you don't have to carry my karma. This is my karma. That I have to look after it. So, discipline and self-discipline. The self-disciplining of this of the self is a critical. And I'm not talking about Indian dancers alone. I'm talking about look at the European ballet dancers. Look at the Russian dancers. Look at how much sacrifice they put in to become those wonderful dancers. Believe me, it is huge sacrifice. They even... Unlike us, they, they give up marriage. They give up those pleasures in life because they want to be that one, you know, at the top there. So it, I'm talking about them also, their food style, their clothes, their keeping warm, uh, seeing that their knees and their spine are, are in a particular condition at night. All these things are very critical. Now, one of the things that Kalakshetra taught me was the value of silence. And I'm not saying it in a very apity way that, you know, silence is some uh, guru halila, they can meditate. Not that type of silence. A silence that teaches you to listen, that allows you to listen. Because sometimes, you know, I may be quiet, but inside my body, a lot is, I mean, I mean, they're thinking of certain things and I'm looking at my mobile and the, the teacher is speaking. I'm not doing anything offensive, but my mind is not quiet. So actually what I'm doing is I'm listening to myself. I'm not listening to what they are saying. And what happens in that, that very critical first explanation, I always tell my students that don't miss the first day that I teach because that day I... I'll tell you everything that I know about this particular line. If you miss it and you ask after, but what did she say? No, but the Naika, is she this or is she that? No, but then Saki, it means you are not listening. It definitely means you are not listening. Look at, a, look at us when we watch a film. If we miss a dialogue in a particular scene, you've lost the link to why something happens later. But when we are learning a padam or a varnam or something, we sometimes just stop listening. And we don't think that, oh, that is the Pallavi line. And it's okay, now I'm learning Anupalavi. I'll go back and learn Pallavi. No, no. You have to know the Pallavi to get to the Anupalavi. You have to know the, know the Anupalavi to get to the Chittaswaram. You have to know the Chittaswaram Sahityam to know the Charanam. So this kind of organic development of a storyline is very important. And this comes from silence. from uh, you Because, you know, silence teaches you not only to listen to the music, to the nuances in the music, to listen to the instruction that your teacher is giving you, to listen to the blessings that your grandmother is giving you. You know, when she does, I am a party na No. She is blessing you with all her heart. That is what will protect you. Believe me, and the Ura Ashirvadam Nanga Silaperak Namukad Bagya Mela Pukadikat. That 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 is a very big thing. An elderly person just putting their hand on your head is a is is it, it gives you those lovely walls of protection against what others will then throw at you. And this protection is what you need as an artist. The, an artist's life is a very difficult life. It's not a life of fun and games. It's a life where a lot of things will be thrown at you. People will very casually say that after you have danced for two hours. They will not sometimes say. Very easily, they'll just brush it. I've seen a better kacheri. Now, even in, I mean, I've seen when I was traveling in the U.S., 
I, I met people who said, you know, that artist came last two months ago. Uh, they danced for three hours. So, Ninga would three and a half hours Pandigla. So, even in terms of they valued it only because of the time, not because of the quality of the work. So, these things are things which you have to deal with. You have to try and understand other people's psyche, but you don't have to do anything that you know compromises your situation. You have to give what you know, which is like a diamond, you have to present it like a diamond because you've already received a very beautiful composition. I'm sure if it's anything traditional, it has its value in gold. So listening to instruction is very important. Listening to the blessings of friends and family is very important. Also listening to yourself. What do I want to do? You know, somebody comes and tells you, uh, it happened in one kacheri, one dancer came, when I was director collection, came to dance there. And she had told me that she was going to do certain, a, a particular item. And then as she was coming into the auditorium, I heard somebody tell her, are you idhika the pandre? She dropped it. So listening to others, rather than listening to yourself. She had chosen it. She had chosen it, but didn't have the guts to go through with it. Because it was either slow, see, we have to make our own decisions and you have to listen to your inner voice. For that, you have to be silent. If you are too much bar, 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 bar all the time, You'll never hear your own true voice. There is a true voice inside. And there's the other voice that I'm, you know, that perhaps you can call this talk as the other voice. It's something that comes out all the time. But there's an inner person. There's an inner, inner Leela. There's an, a person who reflects, who wants to think about something with affection, with love. That person also is there. I have to listen to that person from time to time to find my balance, to find my bearings, which way am I going? So these things are very important. The other thing is to be self-reliant. I know, I know dancers of my own generation who say, say to me, uh, so I say, so they'll say, I couldn't find anybody to do Natwanga for me. That means you gave up some, and they would be better dancers than me, huh, by the way. They would be people who were much better when, I, when we were students than me. Such a person has given it up because she couldn't find somebody to do that. Te te te. Means somebody who will unne aade vikar madre. How horrible that is. That somebody, you need somebody to make you dance. It's like those people who, you know, take animals and make them dance in front of you. I feel so bad for the animal. I feel so bad for the person also. So, I'm saying that you must be self-reliant. I'm waiting for so and so. No, I, when I find a good space, I'll. There's today also one dancer at a program. She said to me, Aka, varnam I'll come to your house. Na nalla nal paate na ungluk cholre. I said, ni nalla nal kaha kaatin rukwanda. Ado varay varad. Whether I'll be there, whether you'll be there, whether the Varnam will be there, God knows. So when you have that, you have to do it. So this, uh, this self-reliance, you know, and this 
uh, ability to hold yourself and to hold your pieces and to if you have a passion you want to do something do it not be dependent oh no now i'll uh, i'll have my second baby and then i'll think and then do it today the second baby will come you do it today today's rehearsal need not be practiced need not be compromised so i'm saying what you can do today do today don't do it tomorrow because that, as we saw with covid tomorrow never came for many people very sad but true the other thing that i think i learned in kalakshetra was the value of humility the value of humility cannot be underestimated and by humility i don't mean you know like we say apne aap ko chota karna it's not that you don't reduce yourself in order to be humble humble just means knowing well the, your limitation and accepting that can i be yamini aka tell me chance il can i be anybody else can i be alert me rally chance il is not a not a hope in hell i can my whole life and my next life i can keep hoping that i i will be as agile as alert me rally or as you know great a dancer as yamini aka i i should know this is what is been allotted for me in this lifetime adu porom and i'm i should be very happy with that very happy with that so knowing your humility just means that you accept something with joy to be someone who has learnt an art form itself is a blessing look at the millions around you who do not have this uh, blessing it is a very special gift to be able to engage with the arts nine to five job many people will will have to do and they are doing because they have a boss and the boss has a boss and the boss's boss has a conglomerate that controls the money and there's somebody a government that controls the conglomerate so you know you're just a small peg in the wheel but look at us artists when you love, have an art it's like you're free you, you can create something you can be you can be the dreams that you dream you can be there nanga pannuvom be ipdi namaskaram pandrom in alaripu when you hold it in front of your chest it the heart is placed there so it's the love you feel for the universe the the affection you feel the love affair you have with a particular person or the 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 love that you will shower on your children or on, on students this is all from this area if you hold it here in front of the matha in front of your forehead that is not just to the guru that is to everything that you learn that the intelligence absorbs everything a tree will speak to you a flower will speak to you a child will teach you and i am a, a driver anybody can teach you something that will you know fills this area with brightness of course there are the gurus and there are there is schooling and university and all books everything that you absorb comes into this area and that, and that is what you that is what you pay reverence to is that in the intelligence alame i can't uh, do anything but this area when you hold the hands above the head what is that area everybody say god we don't know who the god is but to your creative mind to the possibility of dream dreaming the possibility of finding a new uh, or finding a, a, a expressing yourself in like children you know they'll tell you their dreams and they're so interesting ingengalla poittu vandruvanga so that possibility is there in the artist the possibility of creativity and creativity is something that 
I mean, people can earn lakhs, but if they have no creative spirit in them, their lives are pretty run of the mill, in my opinion. Now, we always in our arts, we learn about these words like bhakti, shraddha. What are these words? Bhakti is very important. Devotion. Devotion doesn't mean sitting and doing japa. Devotion means being devoted to the plan, to the idea of being the dancer. That means you have to then, I'm devoted to improving my skill. I have to get that tattai taha, right? Then you've got to deal with it. That devotion to get it out of your system, a bad movement and absorb and pre, uh, you know bring in the correct movement. That devotion to that idea or to somehow nab that naika in that particular javani. That is not my nature. When I was young, Atte gave me some javali, khandita, naika. I was not an angry person. I was a very introvert, very little like that at that time. Now I'm much better. And the, so I said, how can I do it? It's not my nature. How can I be a jealous lover? I'm only 15, 16. So then you realize that it is the opportunity to be that person. It's not a chance. It's an opportunity. To live like another person, to feel their pain, their jealousy, their anger, their uh, envy, things which you don't, you think you don't have, you have them all, but we don't express them. I don't feel like that. Every actor has the, has the opportunity to live the other life, to live like a villain, to live, you know that I'm just saying it, it gives you... Uh, it gives you an opportunity to do something which is not actually written in your fate. So how beautiful is that? You have the opportunity to live another person's life. Opportunity to be a very poor woman in a particular film. That for that one or two months, you live the life of that woman with her feet in, your, in the mud and grinding that stone. So these, these experiences are not just... Uh, they can be very filmy and very artificial. They can be also very real. And we know about great films of the world where actors, you know, starved to make Ben-Hur. They, they, I mean, the, what the actors went through to create that film, you can't even imagine. So this is that thing, that opportunity to live in a leper colony, for instance. One of the scenes over there was all these people in a cave. At that time, lepers were sent and they, they became outcasts to society. But to act that and to feel that repulsion of the light and I, you know, when I look at it now, I think, wow, these are all actors. You know, what a great opportunity to understand what it is to feel like a person who has been rejected by society. So actually, uh, bhakti is that devotion to an idea and that devotion to uh, thinking of every opportunity that you get as a varam, as something that has come to you as a blessing. Oh, I don't like this item. I don't like that ragam. I don't like this uh, teacher. I don't like this style. Take Life is throwing so many beautiful things at you. Come to India. If you don't like the sun, go to America. Where? Whatever. I don't know. I'm just saying. The point is that you may, you may take, make your choices, but you have to also believe that these are great opportunities that come your way and you have to accept them as a blessing and then find joy in them. You see, it's, it's, it's all about you. It's not about somebody else. No, it's not. I'm very ill-fated. I never got the option. And that is something COVID has taught us, is that you can reach out to different people who are not your teachers, who are not your friends, who are not 
accessible to you. You can reach out to them and you can actually, you know, find out about some things that you wanted to know about. So little young kids are doing that now. I, I, I have people, you know, writing to me with, I don't even know who they are. To the best of my ability, I reply, that's all. Something that's bothering them, it's okay. And what is Shraddha? Shraddha, na, we always hear this word. It's a beautiful word. You'll never find an English replacement for that word Shraddha. Some people say hard work. It's not hard work. Shraddha, Shraddha you know what Shraddha is? I'll give you a beautiful example of what I think Shraddha is. If I go for a walk, walk at 5 in the morning outside here in Besanagar, I'll see some in the dark, in the darkness. I'll see one woman coming and sometimes it's the, the lady of the house, but there'll be a ayama who talchifies the outside the gate and puts a coal up. <clears throat> she does that every day throughout the year. She puts that coal up. Is it her house? No. Even if it is my house, does anybody see that kolam? First thing that happens is the, your son takes the car out or your husband takes the car out and drives over it. That is Shraddha. Not only that, she, it's not about putting, it's selfless putting, selfless work. She's putting it for whatever she. And you know, when you, and I watch them, they're so concentrated. Even if I say namaste, or I say, Nana la ma'am, they don't hear. Because between their legs, they have to concentrate on every single number of dots. The hand is going seamlessly. But how does the hand go seamlessly? The brain, the brain, the heart, everything is involved in that beautiful line that goes through these, through these many, many dots creating a thing of beauty you'll say the ants will come and get fed i am doing it so that you can you can have different reasons and i've asked them many times but the main thing is uh, is that you do it because you believe in it so shraddha Give me one second. Give me one second. Happy journey. Happy journey. Safe trip. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, Shraddha is something that, uh, you know, in uh, a group of uh, a group of us were trying to come up with uh, the translation for this word, Shraddha. And what we came up with is mindful practice. Mindful practice. But even that is not enough because then it, it suggests that the mind alone is involved. It should be heartfelt, mindful practice. So when you, so when you make that, you know, your grandmother made that rasam every day. And every day, everybody in the family, chota, mota, bada, something, man, cousins, relatives, party or rasam ninga sapano, abdin vanga. But anybody told her that? Maybe, once in a while. Perimaya alarm pace vanga. But did she ever say anything? mindful practice. Suppose one day she didn't have mindful practice and made that rasam or she didn't have heartfelt practice and made that rasam you can say no, no, no. Once she knew what to do it will just come right. No, it won't come right. So when we think that because it never come. Our heartfelt practice panna stage layer the one show become. And this is something that we have to remember. Shraddha is a very important word. Bhakti is a very important word. Apart from that, I have to say that 
what I'm seeing, I, I've only written down some points about what I've seen, been watching. Very few dancers today, very few artists today have the habit of reading. It's a very serious, uh, because you know, this phone has taken up our lives. Most of our time we are wasting. But if you look at the old days when I was a child, the evening hours, the evening hours when everybody came home and everybody had bath before dinner and that time was kept for either a small prayer, family prayer, like my father's house, there was the prayer time which their grandfather used to read after their grandfather passed away, their father used to read. And everybody sat around and listened quietly. So there was a prayerful time. Then there was a time just to be together and talk quietly, light a lamp, these little things. So this value of reading, uh, it's a very important uh, source for us dancers to gain in confidence when we want to do something. If I read about a particular temple, my Sanjari Bhavam becomes much better than when I'm... See, now there's so many Varnams. And predominantly, they are on which two gods? Shiva and Mahavishnu. So can you put any Shiva uh, Sanjari into any Varnam? Any Shiva Varnam? Is, is, that, is that right? No. Wrong. You can't do that. Illa item le Shiva would mythology at the Porlama? Maybe, maybe not. Because if there is a specific, a composer has sat in a particular spot, in a particular temple, and written about the Vigram there, then it would be good if you followed, if you actually did that one pose in that Varnam at least once. Because that is what he saw, that is what inspired him. And it has relevance to that, it's historical fact. It has relevance to that in that temple and around that small town, what were the legends about Shivana? If we make a little effort to find out, then your Sancharis become very typical to a particular time and space. Not just anything, Ganga came, then she Shiva did like this. You know, nothing, the Varnam has nothing to do with that Kade. Nowadays, when we, we see these Sanchari Bhavas coming one, one Kade from here, one Kade. Oh my God, you're thinking. So, brevity, that leads me to the word brevity. Can we learn to be brief and say the same thing? You know, there is always for a book, there's always an editor. And when you write a book, which I have done, uh, I'm not a writer, but I wrote a book. I did it because I felt my guru needed a, to be written about. So I wrote a book on her biography. But when somebody started editing it, I started crying all the most. I said, you, you, But an editing job is a very critical job. Because what you should be able to say briefly, if you say in one full page, you know, like when children come and talk to you, instead of saying, I got hurt, I have got a nuwa, they'll say, I was walking there, and then the cycle came, and that uncle came, and then this happened, that happened. I got a hurt on my knee. So the whole thing is about that little thing. As soon as you clean it and put something there, all the rest disappear. <laughs> So it's very beautiful. I mean, that is also a lovely thing. But still, I say that as, a, as an artist, you have valuable time on stage. So if you can say it in less words, it would be better than saying it in too many things, too many words. That it's literally, when, they read a, when you read a book that's not well written, editors and publishers say it's so verbose it's so you know and then i'm thinking this must be true of dance also 
They must be looking and saying, didn't get it, didn't get to the point. So there is a value in saying what you want to say beautifully and succinctly. That succinct is adakatoda. Saying it simply. You know, they say they say that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. I like to think ugliness is also in the eyes of the beholder. If beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, what about all the ugliness that we see? Other, 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 then I will concentrate on it. People are very critical of other people. So what I'm saying is, if my eyes are colored, then I can look at anybody and say, this is Allah, this is Allah, this is not right, that is not right. So this prejudice, I think, is something also that I feel we should, I just like to mention it. I don't want to talk about it because prejudice, we are all prejudiced. But if we can learn to see the beauty in another person or in, in, a, in an idea or in another thing, you may not like it, Nanga, when you get gray hair like this, then you attend a lot of kacheris. Everybody wants you to come and see. I've learned to not be critical. I've learned to be accepted and say, I may not do this, but it's okay. It's some beautiful idea, whatever they felt. So this uh, live and let live, I think in our times, uh, if today country, I mean, I'm not talking politics, but if Russia can invade Ukraine, it is not live and not live, not let another person live. So live and let live means that you live the way you want to, but you allow somebody else to live the way they want to. So I'd like to uh, stop with that and also uh, might be interesting for me to listen to you and to answer a few questions. Uh, is that all right, uh, Lavanya? Sure, sure. <clears throat> that we allow others to say something as well. Definitely, ma'am, definitely. So, uh, ma'am, I'd like to start the first question. It's about <clears throat> when I was going through Kalakshetra Foundation's um, website, there was a mention of Adavas refined using Yajurveda. So that's where, you know, like, uh, um, can you please throw more light and like... I didn't write it, so I don't know what that means. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't write that line. I, I, I think it's just... Uh... So, ma'am, when you said about <laughs> reading... <clears throat> Not a problem, ma'am. Um, when yes. you said about reading, ma'am, um, so is that reading definitely have to be something to do with dance literature? Sorry? Uh, when, when you say about reading, like the, we yes. have to cultivate the habit of reading, should it be yes. definitely about the books uh, about that that speak about dance like uh, uh, Panchamarab, uh, all those big, big names where we... Start with the children's books. Thank enjoy, you. Enjoy the lovely journey of the happy little elephant that flies in the sky and... and uh, you know, you, have, you can read anything and everything, but to find joy in it and to see how it can become an expression and how I, I find children's books fascinating because so much thought has gone into those few words. That's why these kids don't leave it. They want you to read that page only because they are very clued in, like little brains. They just, so you have to be so clever to write for them and look at the picturization and look at the, Way these books are presented. Others already every child will be watching. Brief, <coughs> less words, but beautiful picture. No, you can read books on philosophy. I think I think I think you can read a lot of serious books also. I, I read I used to read a lot of philosophy when I was in Kalakshetra. Urmadu Sad Sadhu Madri Aitana. But uh, my parents were so worried then. Eh, I should understand. So, uh, no, but I've read novels and 
everything. I mean, I, I think you should read anything that your hands settle on. We have to read some technical books because they give you an idea about what I was teaching somebody about, I mean, we were going, doing Tala Dasha Prana the other day and I was telling the students, I said, you know, <clears throat> it's good to know what Professor Sambhamurthy said about these pranas of the Tala. And if you can understand it somewhere, it's good. But if you say that, are we using all the Talas? Are we, do we all, do we know the difference between Jati and Jati? Do we know the difference between uh, Gati and Jati? So, there is a lot of gray area uh, for most dancers. Doesn't mean they won't get their Tirmanam right. By osmosis, in practice, we do what the theoretician has to write about. So when we read the book, we say, oh, I don't know about this, but actually you're already doing it. Because in the teaching practice, you've already been taught how to, you know, settle your layam, to settle your talam, to know how many angas, there is a lagu, there is a dritam, there is an anudritam. This happened, you're not paying much attention to it, but uh, <clears throat> sometimes it's nice at some stage of your life to bring those, those two things a little closer together, especially if you're a teacher. So that you're not following the wrong, uh, you, or you don't have a false understanding. Uh, for instance, what we call a tirmanam, Ridangas don't call a tirmanam. Okay. Yeah, there's a big difference between if I if I spoke to one of my Ridangas friends, they'd say are they, are they, it's not a what we call aridi, they call a tirmanam. So like that, there's a lot of you know in the words that people have used, there is a difference. Uh, that is emanated between the dance world and the music world. Uh, so for me, it's fascinating to know why that happened. How did it go? Natvanar's uh, or temple temple traditions went one way and performance traditions went another. What is the reason for that? So Kunjo had a research. So uh, the idea is just to, uh, you know, it's just so interesting. That's all. It's not to make yourself into, I mean, certainly for me, it's not to make myself into some kind of a, theoretical genius or uh, read books so that my eyes go bad, not like that. But I think reading a book, always having some book there that, you know, either invigorates your creative impulse or invigorates your theoretical knowledge or inv invigorates your philosophical understanding of religions or your own religion or your own particular uh, theories. These are very important things. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> I open the floor for questions. Can I see everybody so that I'm not... Okay, let me just change my... Yeah. Okay. Most people are still not showing their faces. I don't know why. I'd like to see faces. Yeah. That is so much nicer. At least then I'm speaking to other humans like myself. That's better. Akka, I want to not... Yeah, and I'm so glad that I'm listening to you at this point. It's been 10 years since I met with you. Ah. So I, I don't have any questions, but I, I reflect most of your thoughts. And then I, go, I, I do realize that how valuable it is um, for the younger generation to know about the Kalakshetra values. Thank you. I, you know, I, I uh, uh, so you're Hema Sharma, right? Yeah. Hema, I, I don't believe these are values that only Kalakshetra has. So I ha I'd like to take that name out of the title okay. uh, for a while and just say that, is it the prerogative of a particular institution or a particular person to have these values and others don't have? No, hmm. I, uh, I, I'd be the first person to say that that is uh, because, uh, you know, Lavinia wanted me to say something about, you know, some connect to my roots, we use the word, and it's not wrong because I learned most of these things from them. I didn't talk about the value of ritual. Ate, Rukne Ate was very, very fond of uh, rituals that were done beautifully. Uh, ceremony madre. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are many things in our, uh, do you walk, can you walk backwards onto stage? Can you say namaste at the back instead of the front? You know, ritual means that maria there, that uh, uh, protocol, how to welcome a guest. These are protocols. Uh, so 
Atte valued that very much. She taught, she taught us that very much. Cl a clean stage. She used to say, oh, classroom any clean idea. And then we'd say, uh, then people will start looking, ah, our Sheshan Varle, Sheshan Varle, Ninga Napane. Ninga Perikite, you keep your classroom clean. Because if he hasn't done a good job, you should have done it. First thing is to have a beautiful floor on which you can perform, uh, do your class. So she was very particular about these things. Uh, but uh, uh, I'd say this, Emma, that. Uh, it's not the prerogative of only one institute to enjoy values that others don't have. No, no, no not at all. Uh, forgive me for that, but uh, problem at all. No, I'd say no. all of us have the capacity to have these values. I'm just quoting from my Excuse life. Me. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else has any questions? <clears throat> okay, ask. No, I, I was telling Lavanya, ask anything you want. Don't don't feel restricted to dance. Either Keta, Akta Sidpangla, Madhikariya, the way na kele. Silliya kele. Yeah. Ah, ma'am, in the Kadhi Kadmani parathla, one part of it. Malarai Ketan. Ah, we need to do. Armiyan part na ma. That means Keta pe na ma bine panra vari one. Somebody else is speaking. Uh, can you just give me a minute? Who's speaking? Inna uh, Can one person at a time speak? I can hear two, two and three voices. Who was speaking just now? Amushiva. Amu, Amu, can I see your face? I, I can only see the top roof of your, yeah. So long, ma. So long. And the part of the end of the kettle? Okay. So I think this is what I heard, ma'am. Uh, she is referring to a song. I think it's uh, Malargal Ketan. Uh, yeah. Okay, Kanmani, Amma. Uh, and uh, she says it's such a beautiful song. Why is it moved? Like, should we consider it uh, for our dance uh, dancing, or should we move it aside as a film song? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think I got that. I, I think she's asked that question. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's. If it's beautiful to you, you should do it, whether it's for dance or whether it's party uh, kacheri or whether it's uh, uh, kalyanam uh, sangeetam or, you know, a beautiful thing. Uh, would you ask that if this flower uh, is not a mallipu, can we use it uh, for a girl who's getting married? If it's a beautiful flower and you want to use it, use it. It's uh, So same thing for the song. I, it's a lovely, lovely song. I have no prejudice because now, you know, I act in films now. I have no prejudice, but the classical world is full of prejudice. You, you, enough films le pane inter kai? Mandi irka? Apni na kya karanga na? But I don't care about those things. So please uh, uh, go ahead and use it if if it if it moves you and it. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful song. <laughs> Nobody is there to set down rules. Yeah. Can anybody who's speaking identify themselves, put on their mic and put it off after they've finished? Anybody else? Uh, namaste, Akka. Uh, namaste, Chitra. Yeah, I'm yes. Uh, so I'm I'm so glad I was able to log in and uh, hear you speak. I was a little late, but I'm glad I did it. Uh, because just this morning after my class with my students, I was feeling a little low. Ah. For various reasons. Uh, sometimes you know parents interfere too much. <laughs> that is also a problem. Uh, so I was trying how to deal with 
the parents not hurt the feelings of the child, but still, uh, you know, and the child is a beginner in dance. I can understand, it's, Amma. It was, uh, it was getting a little too much and I'm so glad I heard you speak. It's not particularly related with that topic, but generally I when know. I heard about everything, it kind of uh, uh, gave me some idea how to uh, figure it out when I meet that child next class and the parents next class. So thank you very much. I'm, I'm very happy that I am. You're most here. welcome. And I totally empathize with you. All of us have been through that. Uh, though I must say, I, I am very, I am very uh, honest or I am very, uh, some would say rude uh, in the very beginning. I say, parents, please don't enter the, the classroom because this is their time with me. Uh, and I think we as teachers have to learn to lay down some norms. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad thing. You know, in their schools, there are norms. In their games classes, there are norms. Uh, why can't there be norms in your dance class? So I think there have to be some things which you believe in as a teacher and you believe in the growth of that child, in the sensitive growth of that child. I think heart to heart talk with the parents from, you know, once in every six months to, to bring them up to date with your thinking on uh, the child's growth and how important it is for them not to be hurt in other ways uh, or told certain things in the house and the teacher saying the opposite in the dance class. These things are, uh, once there was a student of mine, her mother was a Karnatak uh, singer. And uh, she said to her, Nivandir, dance katukano. And when she came to me, she came with such a grumpy face. So I said, uh, can I have a word with your daughter separately? Then the mother and grandmother and all left the room. And I said to her, tell me, are you really interested in doing this? And she said, no. So I said, what do you want to do? She said, I want to learn the guitar. Uh, so I said, well, have you, have you told your parents that? Uh, she said, they don't listen to me. They think I'm South Indian, so I should, I should learn Bharatanatyam. So I called the parents. I said, I'll, I won't take her. I said, no. See, she has a choir. She has a dream. Let her learn the guitar. If it doesn't work, she'll learn Bharatanatyam. Bharatanatyam is not running away. But let her follow her instinct. She could become a great guitarist because her heart is there. But it's also maybe because it's popular. So they're saying uh, popular in school, they have a fad, but uh, that will wear out. Bhatnatim is forever. I don't think so. Bhatnatim is, uh, in her mind, it's not forever. It's just another thing she has. Because, you know, when you're living in the North, every South Indian kid is told that when we go for the summer holidays to Chennai or to Tirutani or to wherever, Trichy or whatever, you can Tamil in So, and there they are learning Hindi and English. So she said, it irritates me, this, this identity thing that they have. <laughs> she was very honest. And I totally empathized with her. So little things like that, go, we all go through it. And my heart is with you. I hope it works out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thanks so much. Thanks, Akhan. Anyone else? Anyone else? Sorry. Good evening, Akka. Uh, Chitra here. Chitra, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, Akka, just, uh, I, I'm teaching dance since like you know, 10, 10, 15 years. So mm. uh, basically, like, uh, I have daughter of uh, 12 years. So she's also learning and uh, she is dancing like, uh, uh, like she has a natural flow in her, uh, her. but uh, lately, like uh, I have started teaching Varnam to her. So the thing is, lately she has been little off. And the other day, like uh, when we started the practice and all, she was a little bit uh, not. She was not focused so much. And since like two three weeks, she's saying of pain when she starts dancing, like pain, high pain, and 
so uh, last one week before when we had that class like she was crying and I, like she she's little scared of me to say things but finally she told me that i'm thinking to you know take little time off dancing so that i feel <laughs> yeah because i feel i'm not having that stamina or what i want i'm not feeling something right so i think i should work on myself first and then go ahead with teaching so then i gave it a thought i thought yeah that will be a good thing because she realized it by herself so yeah. akka, what you feel that's a good feeling what uh, she she's saying about i feel, i feel you know these are atmas who are in your care for a few years you may think of her as your property your child she looks like you whatever but they are not uh, i don't think ramakrishna paramsa's uh, mother thought that he was hers uh, she may have had that feeling but ultimately he belonged to the world so uh, these are atmas they come and go they are given in your care for a little while if she says that she needs a break i think she needs a break it's very it's very stuffy to be learning from your own mother i have to tell you that in the house the other kids are coming in i would say if she did something totally different it would be good for her if she went to another teacher even it would be good for her yes yes akka that's the th- thing i was thinking whether i should do that because after no time... you shouldn't do it no you shouldn't do it don't take all the responsibility yourself no, no her... to send to have no, a other no. teacher you don't take that call let her take that call okay okay you uh-huh. you can let, say what would you like to do you know i i i feel we must give the children uh responsibility also not just uh, not just i want this i want that but also the responsibility of it uh okay. you take a concerted decision you find the right teacher i will not prescribe and then you must be happy with what you choose that is hers so uh, do that you'll find that she'll uh, she'll appreciate you for it okay 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 because i thought that uh, somewhere she's scared to say things to me because yeah uh, yeah but then i thought when we should just leave them for their certain decisions they should know where how what to take how to take it at the right time so i thought let it be if she needs a break let that break be there and then i told her that whenever you will say i will start teaching you back like that was my thing she may not want to learn from you first you swallow that pill you should be ready to swallow that pill and say ah gurvela they don't want to study with me uh, yes akka that i have asked it. her also i have asked her also whether so you want to don't press let her say leave ah, her okay. it i feel you, you maybe you are controlling her too much but if she scared <laughs> to talk to you that is that is itself a sign of some no uh-huh. that is in in general i am the same thing like i am not so like whenever i little bit serious i am so the first impression is you know nobody like the first thing is like yeah very strict that is the first impression comes in but yes when it comes to teaching little bit that strictness comes into me that no, no, that strictness is completely different from allowing them a point of view they mm. must have a point of view she is not a child anymore and yeah, uh, okay. uh the only thing that you have to be very not strict about but I'll certainly be sure of and tell her that is that if she makes a choice for something else that she must be ready to stand by that choice mm-hmm. because it's her choice right okay 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 thank you so much thank you you're welcome hi akka Uh, my name is anju uh, yeah yeah uh, actually i am remya krishnan's disciple i think you know remya krishnan remya krishnan yeah yeah so uh, remya told lots of things about you Thanks so you. i'm just I wondering hope, i hope some good and some bad <laughs> not like that no i heard from arun sir also actually i learned from arun sir also arun shankar so I- yeah so just i'm wondering is it any chance to conduct in workshop especially i'm from outside so that's where, where outside what do you mean i'm from outside because i'm from I'm, us i'm also outside i'm, outside <laughs> no, I'm from where. us yeah and i'm outside from where you are so i'm also an outsider <laughs> yeah so just it's a request so akka 
is it any chance to you already uh, have two, uh, two good teachers ramya and arun why would you want another one no because they to they told akka has lots of techniques and how akka is teaching them so you know maybe, so just want to maybe you're not ready for those i'm i'm not sure uh, i don't think you know if you just keep tasting things that are different you'll find the right taste i don't think uh, it works like that you have to develop a taste not like you know, that akka because it's, it's i two want different things because no i feel see i nothing there's nothing about me conducting a workshop but i feel that you know first you all should learn uh, from you have already mentioned two people who are actually actually very capable uh, in my opinion they are both capable people uh they are not flippant teachers they are not casual teacher they they good abdi irka che they are already a blessing that you didn't get a, a teacher who has taken you somewhere else so you are on the right path abdi irka che adu vande hone in your technique to that first if you can say that you have mastered what they have to give you then you you can go above them they also told if i, if <laughs> I, mean, I am above them i don't know whether i am but i'm saying if if that is the perception you have that i am better than them then once you have mastered what they have to give you then you can think of honing your technique at another level thank you okay wow yes now i have always wondered should we go to abinaya for one teacher and adavus for another teacher is that that's the fashion that i hear nowadays but in when it's we not fashion i'll tell you something about this. this is a very very good question uh it's not about fashion uh we also had the same teacher teaching us adavus and varnams and tilanas and we had the same teacher teaching us abinam adu vera kaalam and the kaalam e pech ipo vande you might be studying uh from a teacher who is interested in technique and not interested in abhinav in fact if you ask many i ask many young people uh you know tell me what padams and javlis you know and they they draw a blank i'm talking about practitioners i'm talking about people who are on the stage here and who are aspiring to get onto music academy platform they don't know what padams and javlis they know can you imagine that that situation so that is true that is a haqeeqat as we say in the north it is it is a fact abdi irkache that means that it's not because they don't know but because they don't never been interested in that area uh, there is a divide that has started coming becoming very apparent between uh, pure dance and abhinav it's not a good thing it's like saying that um, i'm only interested in having a slim figure and i for that i do my exercises i go to a gym i play games ba 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 i do bharatanatyam but i don't i don't want to get involved this smiling and you know making faces at people so it means that you have you're developing one side of your personality your you you can't smile at anybody but you can show them what a great figure you have it, it's not it's not a whole person a whole person is somebody who is both physical mental and emotional and spiritual adavera so but at least these three things should be in alignment with each other the point of our bharatanatyam is that it's so beautifully poised in the physical the mental and the aspirational or the uh you know the one that allows you to express yourself Uh, if that alignment is out of joint and this is you know so low down in the i feel that uh, uh, there are people who are now developing that thing that i am only good at pure dance and i am going to only teach pure dance and for abhinam please go to brigaka uh brigaka is a darling and she's such a wonderful teacher doesn't mean that the whole world has to learn abhinam for her it means that every teacher has to learn to start teaching abhinam and finding joy in it and even if it's a small part if malaral kete na arahana part of this other choli guru mata if that's what moves you teach that you can do raravenu gopapala 
it's just a small gitam but it's beautiful if you find joy in that teach that so it's not about the level of abhinayam having to be you have to do payada in order to teach abhinayam no start with simple little things and find joy in poetry basically you finding joy in the word pura aksharathoda the the word shabda when you start shabdam itself you have started the journey of walking on the word and the word is critical to the to the human race and the bharatiya life how many centuries it took them to form each word so when the words have come to us on a platter golden platter and you say i don't want to have to do anything with these words i'll only do kanak valaku and you know adavu it's please uh, uh, try and remember each of us is capable of doing a uh, beautiful expression it doesn't have to be very overt it can be very gentle very graceful but it has to be part of who you are as a dancer if you are only a nritya specialist i won't want to watch you frankly however good you are akka namaskaram namaskaram Uh, good evening and so thrilled and blessed to be listening to you this evening um akka can you can you just share some pointers on what rukmini devi's approach to abhinaya was because uh when we look at her compositions uh, and and uh, when i i also sort of happened to come in the same way as kalakshetra bani from rukmini devi so when uh, they, we understand that her approach is uh, is markedly different from what today is um uh, primarily taken to be a very abhinaya based approach say in a padam or uh, or a javali the way she handled those uh, so can can you just share some uh, can, you, with uh, can you tell me what you believe to be her uh, marked point of view did, did you have an are you saying this because you believe that that she was she had a different approach no i i i it's it's my humble observation i don't know i might be wrong and i will no, need no, your no 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 tell me i'm i'm very open to that tell me what yeah. what is it so, uh, he uh, i i it feels that you know she drew a lot of beautiful elements from kathakali in fact i feel that if 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 i watch an amohini atam artist perform or uh, a kathakali artist perform it is more closer to uh, the way they use their rangas and lupangas it's it's somehow sort of uh, aligns a little more to the way the uh, the mikkal and all of those so did she have like a a, a certain approach in say for example if ponchi or dari juchu the way she handled uh, in in her choreographies as opposed to what we probably see today uh, which is is uh, uh, in you know what ishwar i think i think you're seeing uh, much more into the subject than uh, as she would be a very very amused by what okay. she's what i'm hearing today and the reason is that she was very normal she was just like you and me uh, she didn't have any great shake interest in kathakali or mohiniyattam she had no knowledge of those styles at all they were not part of her she had started her work in 1934 35 36 when the institute was born in 36 uh, she was learning from the early 30s with uh, minakshi sundar bilesh he was the only person she was exposed to the only other person she was exposed to was anna pavlova uh, and cleonardi who was uh, who taught her in australia as a young girl because she went there as a young bride and she had nothing to do and so uh, pavlova told her on the ship when they were traveling the company was traveling doing a far eastern tour and uh, she used to watch them practicing and she was absolutely enamored but when mm-hmm. she came back and she saw the pandanalu rajalakshmi and uh, vijalakshmi performing at academy she was blown off I mean, she she just uh, she knew this is this is what i want to do uh she was not influenced by kathakali she was not influenced by mohini mohini atam is by the way came much after her okay. even even after her experience as a teacher was over uh, so it's a very young style if you like that and odissi was born late early 60s actually they came into the picture uh you i think your uh, opinion is based on uh, if i may say so based on uh, what you, you see she was the first to use a lot of 
young men, a lot of boys. And yeah. she used them for her dance drama. Adya Lakshman sir, Adya Ramu, Pony uh, Raman, you know, Catherine's husband. Uh, these were the early young dancers of Kalakshetra, Balagopal. These people were brought from Kerala to play the role of Rama and Lakshmana. And uh, the idea of teaching young boys uh, of how to take characterization came from their exposure to Kerala, where always had very good comedy, a lot of good mm -hmm. theater. Even in villages, the theater companies would travel. So in Andhra Pradesh and Kerala were full of young people who were exposed even in their village environment to uh, comedy, to you know what you now call stand-up comedy was very much part of the traditions of those areas. There were people, C.K. Uh, Balagopal's father was a, one of the greatest comedians in Kerala at that time. But he was unknown because he was traveling from village to village performing for small amounts of money. Uh, what they used to call Komangi, they, they, somebody who was a, a, a funny person who, who had his own dialogue. It would come out about a local politician or about a local priest. Or he'd make fun and everybody thought it was very funny. But they were great actors. So the boys came from those, they'd already seen other men, Yakshagana, Tirukotir, Melatur Bhagavatam, they had seen them perform. It was not in, in those states and in those villages, it was not considered infradict for a boy to, uh, to be part of an acting company. Okay. So she had young people who were brought uh, either for music or for dance who came and took these early roles. Okay. And she never used a woman. She never used it. She had a lot of female yeah. students. Never ever did we come with a stuck on mus yeah. moustache yeah. to be a man, which I see today happening. I yeah. see companies where they use only girls and they do the entire Mahabharata. Can you imagine a story yeah. that is so aligned to male dancers or males and they're done all by little girls from 14 to 21. Right. It's horrible to see them with that st stuck Kaka Paksha, Paksha men, yeah. you know, beards and moustaches and beautiful faces and all hidden by the beards. So there's a lot of things that you have to remember historically. As far as she is concerned, her Abhinem came from the Pandanalur school. And the, and the Bani Lerprina, they used to teach you the Jatiswaram, Alaripu Jatiswaram, Varnam, Tilana. And the Vatyar Gallam, but they'll always say, Ida Padartha Kai, Ida Manavi Chekona Rada, Abi Panono, Ada Kapramam, Ningavandi, Yosche, Inno Rendakai, say the Pon Panango of Pima. So they, the, the, the dancer had to uh, think hmm. instead of this Nerum, I show this Nerum, or if, instead of hearing, I say Kaker. So this was, you had to be innovative. And right. Atte was extremely innovative. Uh, there are stories about how she used to uh, expand the hands, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how she would create. So in the Kai Vandadilam, Atte was very good at it. Uh, right. There was no technique that she borrowed from anything. She just okay. went by her own instinct. But she started very late in life. This is what you have to remember. She was already, you know, by the time she was on stage, she already had you know, pain in the knees. She had, she, her, yeah. she was, she didn't want to be uh, a dancer in that sense. She was, she was wanting to create an institution, a pedagogy, a, a theoretical base, a, a love for the Shastras. She wanted children to get involved in educating their minds, their souls. She was interested in philosophy. She was interested in stories. She was a great storyteller, great storyteller. That's why she did 35 full length dance dramas full of Shringaram and full of, uh, you know, villains and the same like, like you have anywhere else. Other than that, every facet of life comes out in them. And she did it uh, to the best of ability. Now, you know, a hundred years after her life, uh, some of us are analyzing, oh, she took Pomoniatum, she did like other, it's all, sorry to say, it's a lot of bunkum. It's just a misinformed uh, thing. You have to remember that 
anybody. If Meenakshi Sundar Pillai taught in a particular way, it was because he was teaching at the end of the two centuries ago. Right. And if she taught in a particular way, it was because she was teaching a century ago. And if you have a teacher today who is teaching you like, suppose I were to teach you, it's because I belong to this age and this time. And I'm informed by the information that I get in this day and this time. I may do that same Dari Jutsu, but it's informed by another mind. You will do it in the way that you will do it because you are informed by another country, by another, uh, you're exposed to, you know, the la tallest trees in the world. I do, I've never seen a, a tree that tall, but you mm -hmm. have the opportunity to see it. So, you know, every little thing changes the dim dimensions of your mind. And I think we do Abhinav according to our own instinct uh, it's just a way of expressing yourself. You don't have to take from anywhere. You don't have to give anybody anything. It's just you. I think Ishwar doing Abhinam will be Ishwar doing Abhinam. Uh, somebody, one of the most beautiful lines in the Ramayana, uh, which I had the privilege of performing this particular uh, shloka, was when the Gandharva Apsaras, when the war is going on between Ravana and Rama. Uh, they described the war. Atte was very against showing warfare on stage. Mm -hmm. So what she did is she did a very clever thing. She took uh, the verses of the Gandharva Apsaras. They were looking down on the war. And what they saw, the whole war was covered in one scene by the Gandharva Apsaras. So you never saw any swords, battle, nothing happened. Either we were, you know, he's been killed by so-and-so and this. Uh, but one of the beautiful shlokas they said is they were trying to describe it. So they said, you cannot describe this war. Gaganam gagana karam, sagaram sagaropa, uh, sagaropa maha, uh, rama rava, you know, the, what they literally said is you cannot Compare the sky to any other thing. You can only compare it to the sky. Sagaram you can only compare to the Sagara. There is nothing to compare with the Sagara. Adi Madhi in the Rama Ravana Yukamande cannot be compared to any other war. Abdina Amangavanda the Adi Gidi Adavu Pote Kirtakadam Pote. We were running helter skelter around the stage. One of Mahate's most beautiful scenes. Uh, I had the privilege of being one of the first, the first ba batch to do that. It was an experience I'll never forget. Um, beautiful dancing and Abhinam of some other order because yeah, yeah. she wanted, you know, them to create the magic of that war through their eyes and through their faces. Abhinam is not just about yeah. doing it one or another way. Yeah. Right. I think I was, I was getting to that. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, thank you, Ishwar. Thank, thank you for thank you joining so us. There were a couple of hands that have, that have gone up. One, uh, Jyoti Jyotish, may I please request you to unmute and ask. Namaste. First Namaste. of all, my apologies. I'm not able to switch on the camera because of network issues. Okay. A little session by you is a dream come true for me. Seriously, I mean this. Uh, the day I saw, um, I see... I was memorizing that song and, and it just slipped off my mind. You had uh, you, you had choreographed the Shiva Tandava dance. Uh, Ananda Natana Prakasham. Yeah. That's just awesome. There is no other word I can find. I'm really short of words for that. And uh, after I read your comments on uh, at the Nat I watched your comments at the uh, Natya Kala conference wherein you said that Arangetram's necessarily don't need to be such a big uh, you know splurging affair they can be done in a very decent and nice way i have been wanting to attend a session that is conducted by you and i really genuinely feel blessed today thank I you so much oh you're welcome the most welcome in fact we should thank you for you know coming up with such a beautiful uh, uh, session today and uh, thank you to lavanya also she always makes sure that she conducts beautiful sessions so thank, thank you lavanya I just have one question to you. Um, yes. I often get to hear this, that uh, it is not enough to just learn. Uh, I mean, the word that, that people use is master one dance form. 
we need to learn more than one wherein i would i believe that you know mastering one art form itself is not possible in one birth there is so much to be learned in this so i would like to know your take on learning multiple dance forms classical dance forms that is you know it's so funny you asked this question today i was attending the annual day of uh, <clears throat> shivo uh, of uh, kishor musalakanti and his wife uh, at uh, rr sabha just this morning and the dancers uh, three of the dancers who were in the program kacheri murchutte they came down mm -hmm. and asked me if i'll teach them bharatanatyam <laughs> so i asked them how many people do you want to be married to at the same time Seriously. so they said ye akka apri kekrel i said can you imagine in one house in one body to have two or three or four husbands together at the same time i said it's uh, not possible because it's not about learning a form the form you can learn you can't become that other person Very you true. have to become another person to do another form you have to literally become your soul has to turn if a bharatanatyam tor vasane vande enoda hridayathile irkano if i don't have that and i try no oh, today i'm going to learn this or that i can go and try and do some modern dance it 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 doesn't sit in my body and fast away but he and i had this conversation many many years ago when i was teaching in Kala, in bharatiya kala kendra kendra is was here and katha kendra was here bharatiya kala kendra was here just you had to cross a road to reach and his students would come and say can we learn bharatanatyam because at that time it became a fad to learn a second style and students from here would go there so we both had a chat i was very young compared to him in 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 stature and i said maharaj ji with folded arms i said i'm so sorry this is happening but some of your students have come i i please from my side know that i will never take them without your abject um, permission and he we will decide you and i will decide abey i'm to just allow it the matter was resolved after that they knew never to come to the two of us but because in kathak we have no names no mudras also we have only this we don't have any other mudra we use that for our nitta we use that for our abhinam also but the story i tell and the story you tell is the same so i said because maharaj you are such a greater actor than i am i need these props you don't need anything in the kannale ellam kamchidu true that you know literally i was and he said this at a at a conference with scholars and all oh yeah he did, he didn't mince his words he said i feel no need for us to have or to borrow any mudras from anybody this one he said how do uh, classical ballet dancers manage they have no mudras at all we have one they have nothing they tell the same story of romeo and juliet spartacus uh, this that all the kadhas all the dramas they do they also do they also have show love they show passion they show enmity they show desire they show killing how is it they do it so we don't need all this if you are a really good actor you slowly start dropping the mudras and you come down to just the face and the eyes with a little hand gesture that supports it but you don't need all this stuff so this is the this is the divide between theory and practice practice was always simple straightforward simple and theory is always and there's one more thing i just wanted to share i won't take much of others time and your time as well um 
the same thing that you said today with regards to one of the students who was not interested in learning Bharatanatyam. I had the same experience around 20 years ago, two sisters coming to me to learn dance. The elder one was interested, the younger one was not. And one day it so happened that the elder one couldn't attend for some reason and the younger one was there. And I could see, I could sense that she's not interested and she's doing out of compulsion. And like uh, you said, I just asked her, please tell me, are you genuinely interested in learning Bharatanatyam? So she said, no. Mummy bolti hai, force karti hai, isliye mein seek rahi hoon. So then I told her, thank you for being so honest. I'll tell your mother. When she, when her mother came to pick her up, I told her, please don't force your child. She's not interested in Bhattarakya. You are wasting her time, her talent, your money, my money also. So keep it aside and put her into something that she will be uh, doing with her heart and soul into it. And she stopped learning dance from that day. And I couldn't thank God for uh, more enough for giving me that sense, you know, to tell yeah. that mother not to force your child on that yeah. note a huge thanks to you thank you so much thank you tanuja you had your hand up are you ready with your question good evening ma'am i had a doubt but i think jo already asked what, what I wanted to ask and you already answered my question. Okay, thank can you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. So, are there any more questions? It's good. Everybody's understood everything. I I have one. <laughs> I have Please. one small question I, sure. I always wanted to ask um, is there any motive between doing takadimi with this like like takadimi like this instead of like this uh, why? It's, not called, it's not called takadimi it's called tattimetta and tattimetta there's no difference whether you do it like this or like this you can do it in aramandi because the i i've seen most of the varugur school uh, dancers do it in Aramandi. Uh, why or how the leg move there is probably because it is a valid posture and it's not used in anything else except Tattimutti or in these Sharaka Ladavas, you know, where we push Ta, 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 and the Madri in especially in the Kalakshetra school, they make use of that, that uh, right angled position. Pratya leader. So to do some out of it, but mostly it is unseen and uh, it's not easy to do that. The knee positions of both have to be very definitive. Uh, but those of us who have practiced it and, you know, sort of molded the body to produce it well, it looks extremely beautiful on stage. So does the other one. I, I don't see anything uh, I would not be able to say this is better or that's better. Tattimit itself is just a beautiful, beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful happening because uh, there's this uh, rhythmic uh, configuration happening in the lower body and this Abhinem going at another pace, maybe in Chatushram or something. Other, other way would be a splendid, uh, it's, a, it's like a wonder, wonderment, you know. Even now, after all these years, I don't feel, ah, I know this. Oh, it was that I, I don't think, I, I'm always amazed by it. Ah, takes your breath away, actually. If it's done beautifully, it's amazing. But uh, in the Kalakshetra Bani, you have to keep your mid body very straight when you're doing that. You can't turn your body like this or turn like this because your right leg is in front. You can't turn like and do the Abhinam like this or like this verse over your shoulder, you know, that was not allowed. You had to keep your body straight while your knees were at right angles to each other. And so the Abhinem would be the same way, direct speak. Uh, it, it takes a little time to master, but it's not impossible. Okay. I have to say that it's been a, a real pleasure. Uh, I haven't got to know any, I mean, most of you, but uh, certainly to uh, have questions by some specific 
a few among you means that I, I've been able to hear what you'd like to say and what I'd like to, if I could have been of any help, then of course, it's a pleasure. But it's nice to have spent a couple of hours with you. I'd thank like to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lavanya. It's a pleasure. Uh, pleasure. I take, I take your leave. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Akka. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Thank you so much, Akka. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank, 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 you. You. thank you. Have a good night. Namaskar. Lavanya. Yes. Thank you so much for organizing. This is the first time, you know, um, I mean, my schedule doesn't work sometimes. So, uh, but Leela Ka, I know for several years and uh, actually I did the workshop and she conducted 10 day workshop for um, residents, USA residents. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful time in Kalak Chetra and then I always loved her Abhinaya. And uh, so I missed several of your sessions but this one i would not want to miss so i made sure that <laughs> keep on doing this thank you so much thank you so Bye. much i hope it's, it's nice, nice meeting you online nice meeting you all nice meeting you too i hope these sessions are useful like yeah, you absolutely yeah, absolutely yes yes yeah, well, yeah. You know, if i don't listen to it now sometimes when i have time you know i can sit down and go through the recording also and then listen to it thank you bye thank you lavanya this is thank Jyoti. you ma'am Thank you. Tell me, Pa, Jyoti. Jyoti Jyoti share. Uh, thank you. You come up with such wonderful sessions. Oh my God. You're just awesome, my dear. I just wish all the very best to you. Ambal, Ipriya, Ennika,